Hello, I'm Sonia, and welcome to Red Cardinal Kitchen. So I was going through my computer files, and I found a file folder from 2009 for recipes from A to Z. And I saw a recipe that I had created. It is called a sweet potato quick bread. It is a very moist sweet bread for any occasion, whether it be for parties, holidays, or just plain snacking. So stick around and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. Now you will be the first to get my free recipes. And just a reminder, the recipe with ingredients and directions will be in the description below. Also, we have a merch store in the shopping section of our YouTube homepage. There are t-shirts, hoodies, shopping bags, and more coming soon. So come check us out. All right, so let's get baking quick bread. So I have my bowl ready. And the first thing I want to do is add three medium eggs or two large eggs. I happen to have medium. And I'm going to get those started. Kind of give them a little beat. Get them started. And then I have one quarter. Now I've reduced the oil. I don't like a lot of oil in my bread. And so it is going to be moist because I've added the addition of some applesauce. So, and if you can't have oil or butter, anything like that at all, take it all out. Add prunes, applesauce, uh, blend it up peaches, apricots, anything that you feel is moist, a fruit, because it is sweet. So, I, Well, you could add carrots. <laughs> Today we're adding sweet potatoes. Okay, now I have another little cup for my, <laughs> my props. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to also add flavoring. Now, if you have an orange, I don't have my orange, so I used up my oranges for my candy for Christmas. Well, this is orange, and orange extract and vanilla, so you can do it either way. If you have the orange rind, go ahead and grate your thumb and make a little zest. Okay, so you're blending everything in one at a time. Now I have a full cup of... Uh, <laughs> it's very tough here. A brown sugar, and it's half uh, uh, sucralose and half white granulated sugar. And uh, it works very well. And then you get half the sugar that way. Now, I'm not sure about sucralose, what it does in the body, but... So far, I've been eating it for ever since it started coming out. So, and I'm doctor hasn't said anything about my health. So, all right. And now we're going to add the sweet potatoes. Now these have been baked and mashed, and so there's less liquid that way. If you do happen to cook them, which I think is less flavor when you go to make anything with yams or sweet potatoes. Um, just uh, drain them well. You don't want more moisture into your cake. So anyway, sweet potatoes and they caramelize and give you that really beautiful extra flavor. that all mixed in. And so 
If you were doing this at home or right now, you have already completed your wet ingredients and now you're going to measure your flour and I have two cups of flour measured and it is spoon measured. So how I do it is I uh, sift a couple cups of flour into a, a bowl and then I just measure it with the spoon and put it back into the cup and into another bowl. If you like, you can whisk it, but the thing is, you're going to have more flour. So when I got done, uh, you know, sifting it and just putting it in into the measure cup and sifted it, when I got done spooning it back into the cups, I had a good, almost a half cup of flour left, so you know you need to, uh, so you don't want to have a stiff cake. Now I have some flax. Now if you don't like flax, you can use some kind of nut, but this is a seed I like. And I have some pumpkin pie spice without nutmeg because I make it myself. I don't care for the nutmeg, um, otherwise you can get it already made. And it has the baking soda salt and baking powder. So I'm going to put that in there and give it a little whisk to combine those spices or you can just put this whole thing back into a you know a, a sifter somehow and uh, sift it through and over which I'm going to be doing and then to make sure all the spices are well combined because you don't want to have to, to have a bite of cake and you know, your piece is not as spicy as the other piece. Okay, so now this is just chopped up raisins. You can use dates or anything you prefer. I just happen to like raisins. And I'm, I've stirred them uh, into the flour. So I won't put them in yet, but so that when they combine with the wet, they won't just all clump in one spot. Hopefully they'll disperse better. All right, so let's put this. Now you would set it aside and you would. Now let's go back and we're going to start adding some flour. So, and I will be using the entire amount because it's measured. And you'll see my flax. I'll dump it out when it gets because it's not going to go through that sieve. So. But I'm focusing on getting the spices and everything all blended. So everybody has their own way of cooking. So what I do here doesn't mean that it's set in concrete. You can do your own way. I provide the recipe and you know you can add or take away, um, do how you were taught. So I'm going to wipe, get this down off the sides first. Now I'm just going to fold this. You don't want to do a lot of whipping, beating. Just makes it tougher. Want a light, moist, delicate quick bread. And it's called a quick bread because it contains no yeast. So you don't have to rise it. All righty. Now, that's good enough for me right there. And then I'm going to take those raisins and that extra flour, get them in there, and this will be my last fold and into the pan and into the oven. Now, it's a little thicker than a cake mix. So, See how those raisins are pretty much everywhere instead of in one spot. Now, you see I'll eat just a few little turns. Now let's get it into, now I put the lard, but you can use a spray, but how I do it is I put my lard in there, flour it up, and then it come back and kind of put it together and then I reflour it. One day I'll have to do that. All right, I'm going to get
get this in. So I hope everybody is happy today. I hope you something has made you smile. Uh, if you're not feeling well, I hope that you do get well. And just to know that uh, I think dearly of all of the people that come to my cooking show. So there you are. And I know there's a whole lot of shows on YouTube and it's hard to get around to everybody. <coughs> I had that same problem. <laughs> Because we do have a life outside of our computers, don't we? Okay. So, there you are. Just kind of, I like to move it to the edges and have it lower in the middle so that when it bakes, it tends to come up more flatter and even across. So when you go to slice it, you don't have these big old heels. There you go. It is going to go in a 350 degree oven. I have a steamy water uh, pan in there. Uh, and I'm going to bake it for between 50 minutes and 70 minutes. But at 45, I will be checking it. All right, we'll see you when that happens. And we'll have our taste test. All right, well, we're back. It's baked. Oh, wow. 45 minutes. And I think the reason why is because we had a new element put into my oven. The other one burned out. So it's taking, you know, 10 to 15 minutes sooner to get done, which is a good thing for energy costs. All right, so now let's go ahead. It's been cooling for about 10, 15 minutes. And I'll just go ahead and loosen it up a little bit from the side. And hopefully it will come out in one piece. No matter how I prepare my pan, you always have that worry. <laughs> okay. What I like to do is just kind of flip it. There we go. All right. And one, two, three, drum roll. Uh, <laughs> not bad. All right. And then. And they say cooks don't work. <laughs> We're acrobats. <laughs> All right, and then I just slide it right off. Try not to put it on the floor. <laughs> I've thrown pies, pizzas, everything onto the floors, casseroles upturned <laughs> in my days. All right, now, I'm wondering if I should get a different knife for that. Let's see. My old fashioned boning knife again, how's that? I'm just gonna start right here. Now you can butter if you'd like, it comes out. Remember, when you put all these good things on top, it adds calories. So there's a nice, and you can see how the molasses makes it a darker color uh, to pair with your sweet potatoes and the, uh, get a nice size piece for everyone. Uh, I put in the applesauce for extra moisture, but there's other fruits that you could put in if you don't like one thing. Try another. And let's just let it fall forward. 
There we go. There we go. So, one more time. I kind of got a little crooked there. So let's straighten it up. There we go. Now we'll just let the heat out. So now, put this up here. And now this here, I put, uh, this is cream cheese. And I added some brown sugar to it and some orange extract. So it's quite tasty. Now you can use powdered sugar. This is a little gritty, but I think after it melts a little bit, but I don't mind the grit because the flavor is so good. Uh, I just thought I'd try something different. All right, so now I'm going to take a piece of our nice Mmm, quick bread here. Oh, wow. And let's put a little, maybe up here this time. I'm usually always getting on the sides. Mmm. Yeah, cut that. This is hot, so I don't want to dive in with it on my teeth. You know, that little soft part on your, uh, top of the roof. <laughs> You've burned it before. The hot things. All right. Taste test. Here we go. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. I'm going to try a piece without the I just want to try it on its own. It'll probably be less sweet now since I put that sweet sweet in there. I suppose I could sip some water or something. Anyway, let's try. Mmm. Mmm. So sweet. Yeah, I'm picking up the um, the yam in the background. It's it's a flavor that you you can taste. You can't hide hide the yam, but it's a wonderful flavor if you like yams. If you don't, you can make the same recipe. Just double your applesauce or other fruits for moisture. And uh, so it was a cup of. Uh, uh, sweet potatoes, baked sweet potatoes, but you can tr uh, put carrots in it and make a carrot cake. Have fun with this recipe. I just developed it uh, one day. Uh, I, w I, I was right tired and my husband was at work all day long. I had nothing better to do than to cook and make recipes. And so I have uh, lots of recipes for cookbooks, but I just never gotten there. So it looks like I'm getting there. So anyway, thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. And so for every step of the way, Red Cardinal Kitchen says, happy eating and God bless. We'll see you guys next time.